Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are welcome once again to our series, to the next edition of our series of online lessons. This is Islamic College, Oshobo. The subject is chemistry and the topic is solution to mock examination for SS3 students. This, today we are looking at question 5, solution to question 5, which happens to be the last question in the essay type questions. And the questions go to us. 5A1, you have to define electrolysis. Electrolysis. The word electrolysis comes from two words. Electro and lysis. Electro from electricity, lysis from splitting, that is, the composition or breaking down. Therefore, electrolysis is simply defined as the process by which a chemical substance in solution or molten form is broken down or is decomposed as a result, as a result of passage of electric current. The substance that is decomposed in that process is usually called electrolytes. And when, when electrolytes begins to compose, we have ions. Coming to question two, you have to copy and complete the table below for the electrolysis of some electrolytes. As we have said, you cannot have electrolysis if there are no electrolytes. Now, considering the electrolytes given, the first one here is molten sodium chloride. Now, when you say molten electrolytes, it means you only have the ions from the electrolytes in circulation. And the sodium chloride will just decompose to form sodium ion and the chloride ion. There are only two types of ions in, in the solution. And when you have sodium ion and chloride ion, the positive ions will always be at the cathode, while the negative, the negative ion will be at the anode. Since we have only two types of ions, so there is no controversy. Sodium ion will be discharged at the cathode. The essence of going to the electrode is to get discharge, that is, losing charge and becoming sodium metal. Now, when you have it this way, the best thing is to just balance the atoms. And the atoms balance one atom in each case is balanced. Then, balance the charges. So you have plus one here, you have zero here. So you add the electron to this side to make. To balance it. You always add the electron to the side that has more charge. So this is this is the reaction of the cathode for this reaction. And like we have said, only one type of negative ion. So there's so that, that's the main and then we get it down to go to the and and it will get the charge as usual and, and the anode. No need. No need the atom so it's going to to CL2. So balance the, the atoms. You have to put two here. The balance is charge. The charge here is minus two. The charge here is zero. So you have to, to, to balance the charges you put plus two electrons. And this confirms to us that reduction takes place at the cathode. Oxidation takes place at the cathode. Since reduction is addition of electron, and oxidation is what? Removal of electron. This is removal of electron. So reduction always takes place at the cathode. Why oxidation always take place at the anode? So for brine, the meaning of brine is a concentrated sodium chloride solution. So this is testing our knowledge of factors affecting selective discharge of ions at the electrode during electrolysis. So concentrated sodium chloride solution. It means with, since it is a solution, we have apart from sodium ion chloride, we also have ions from water that is hydrogen ion. And the hydroxide ion. Therefore, there are two types of ions at the cathode sodium ion and hydrogen ion. So, which one will be discharged? Remember, whether well, sodium ion, even if it is in high concentration, it doesn't get discharged in preference to hydrogen. Since hydrogen is far below sodium electrochemical. So hydrogen will still be discharged, even though sodium ions in 
high concentration. You will remember this for the knowledge of electrolysis that we made in the first two. So it's the amygdala that will be discharged to get. And when the amygdala gets discharged, what does it become? It becomes hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is in two, so you balance the atom by putting two here. You have two plus the hydrogen gas, so you add electron, two electrons, you have to balance it. You remember your knowledge of balancing of uh, oxidation redox equations. So this is the actual output. The general terms of that. Right. Now, at the end, what happens? At the end, you have fluoride in the red ion. And whenever a light ions are in high concentration, they are always discharged in preference to a peroxide ion. Please take note of that. When I say an A light ion, an ions of allergies like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. When they are in higher concentration, whenever they say concentrated and the ion here is a bromide ion, it will be discharged in presence of hydrogen uh, hydroxide. Even though hydroxide ion is lower than it in electron So it is chlorine ion that will take to take charge here and perform so balance the atoms, balance the charges. So this is the reaction approach. It means maybe the reaction of both in sodium chloride, sodium is composed at the cathode, chlorine gas is liberated at the end. During the electrolysis of brine, hydrogen is liberated at the cathode, chlorine is liberated at the end. Now the electrolysis of uh, dilute sodium chloride, dilute sodium chloride solution. Now in this case, we are talking, we still have the same type of ions as we have it for prime. The only thing is that sodium ion and chloride ion are not, in concept, are not concentrated. Therefore, the only factor that takes place there, that we are going to consider there, is the creation in the electrochemical series. And that is, now that means whichever one is going to be in the chemical series, it will Between sodium and hydrogen, hydrogen is going in the chemical series. Therefore, hydrogen will be discharged at the cathode here. And between fluoride ion and hydroxide ion, hydroxide is why the ion is so hydroxide ion will be discharged here to form H2O plus O2. To balance the atoms, 2 here, 4 here, and then to balance the charge, 4 electrons. So the summary of this all is that sodium metal is deposited at the cathode during the electrolysis of most of sodium chloride. Hydrogen gas is liberated at the cathode. During the reduction of fire, and hydrogen gas is liberated at the cathode during the reduction of dilute sodium chloride solution. At the anode, chlorine gas is liberated at the cathode. At the anode, during the reduction of uh, molten sodium chloride, chlorine gas is liberated at the anode during the electrolysis of brine, and oxygen gas is liberated at the anode during the electrolysis of uh, dilute sodium chloride. So we we will remember that there are three factors that are that determine the effective discharge of ions to the electrolysis, which are concentrated prime, position of, uh, of uh, ions in the electrochemical series, concentration of ions, and uh, the type of electrode, nature of electrode that is used, whether it is inert electrode or uh, inert electrode is also called passive electrode or the active electrode, or the electrode of our ions. Now, coming to the because that is on organic chemistry. D1, you are the define the functional group. Functional group. Functional group simply is the bond atoms or group of atoms that are unique or peculiar to a family of organic compounds and which determine the chemical reaction of the family. So it means functional group could be bond, whether it is a single bond or double bond or triple bond. It could be the atom that's attached to it, maybe nit nitrogen for nitrites or some other things like that. It could or be a group of atoms like hydroxy group, like cyanide group, like the amino group and so on. That make the that distinguishes the family of organic compound which determine their chemical reactions or chemical properties. Now next part of the question, you need to draw the structure of each of the following. 
Tere to fill in the bute. When you have to draw the structure of the compound, the first thing you have to consider is the parent's name. The parent name here is the thing. Bute. And when you say when you say bute, it means you have four carbon atoms in the carbon scale. So C, C, C. This is four carbon atoms. Then you have Tere chlorothylene activity. It means we have to determine which one is the first carbon atom, which one is the second carbon atom. And in that question, the question is actually Tere chlorothylene activity 2 or sorry, Tere chlorothylene activity 2 or so. It is the parent name is Butano, and that means we have four carbon atoms in the chain, as we have said. That is. Uh, C, 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 like that. Four carbon atoms. Now, C, 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 C. Now, the first thing you have to determine is the position of the or. And what is the position of the or? It means it is hydroxy group. Hydroxy group and it's on carbon 2. So, the diameter of carbon 2, you can start to name this one carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. It is not wrong to start to count from here and say this one is my there's nothing wrong with that. Because if you have chosen to start with the then you close the hydroxyl group on carbon 2. Because you have said it is butan 2 or it means the hydroxyl group on carbon 2. Then the next thing is to come back to the what? The substituent groups. Tere chloro, it means chlorine is on carbon 3. That is chloro. Then tere methyl, it means methyl group is on carbon 3 as well. Now, since we are, we, are, we are done with the functional group and the substituent groups, we have no other thing other to complete the meaning carbon atoms with what? With uh, hydrogen. So hydrogen here, yeah, 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 hydrogen here. Yeah. So this is the structure of a uh, fluoro, ferrite, and two R. So it's so easy. Now, for, for, for the second part of this, we have to draw, draw the structure of a theory of the butamic acids. Again, we have butamic acid as the parent name. Butamic acid is the parent name. Butamic acid is the parent name. Therefore, the, we have four carbon atoms in the structure as well. One, two, three, four. Don't make the mistake of now adding another carbon atom to stand in for the the carbon uh, the carboxylic group. No, the carboxylic carbon is part of the chain and the axis is going to stand as carbon one in this case. So it means you put your carbonyl and hydroxy group here. So this is this has shown that this is you have uh, your butanoic acid skeleton. Now, but we have another element, the methyl. If this is carbon one. Then this is carbon 2, this is carbon 3, so you have a methyl group of carbon 3. And it happens this below here of carbon 4. And that is, that's a stick care of the, both the functional groups and the substituent group. Then the next is to complete the remaining parts with hydrogen. So this gives us the structure of pyrene methyl butanoic acid. So easy. So there's no problem at that. Now the next question, question B2. This question is on inorganic chemistry. The question demands that we should explain why it is not advisable to react in that transformation form with dilute acid in a sealed glass tube or glass flask. So when you have this type of question, the first thing you have to consider is what will be the product. Even if you have not thought of the, the such, such kind of question before, just think, okay, why would it be? Then you try to write the question for the reaction. If you write the question for the reaction, you would be able to get why it could be. So the, the question for the reaction, for this type for this reaction is meta, meta transfer. Let's say the meta is N, CO3 plus any acids, H plus. What happens? The N takes up the, uh, what do you call it, the anion from the acid, from the acid, while the H2 
2 will take place and 0 to gas is function. So if this happens, it, it means this is a gas. A gas is con continuously produced in the flask. And the flask is sealed, so the gas will not escape. It means pressure will continue to build up in the glass. Until the glass, until the glass can no longer, until the pressure becomes unbearable. If the pressure inside the glass is higher than the pressure outside the glass, the glass gives way, and that means the glass sharpens. So the, the simple answer to that is that since a, a carbon dioxide, a gas, is produced, the, 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 and the gas could not escape. The continuous build up of carbon dioxide inside the gas flask leads to prayer in the gas flask, which, may, which leads to the shattering or shattering of the glass. The glass gets shattered in the process. I ask you to define solution. Simply put, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent. Then solubility. Solubility. Solubility is the amount of solute that dissolves in a known amount of solvent at a given temperature in the presence of undissolved solutes. There are key points there that must be present in the definition. One, amount of solutes. Two, amount of given, given amount of solvent, or a specific amount of solvent, at a known temperature, rest of undissolved solutes. So once these are present in the definition, the definition is full. Question 5D. You are given the following data. Mass of empty Dry crucible 100 grams, mass of crucible plus saturated solution of X 206 grams, mass of dry X 128 grams, density of solution 1.20 gram per cubic centimeter, molar mass of X 92 gram per mole. From that information, you are required to find solubility of X in gram per cubic decimeter and solubility of X in mole per cubic decimeter. This question is so easy. So easy. I don't know why many of you missed, missed it. It is so easy. From the information, mass of dry crucible 100 grams. It means mass of dry crucible plus saturated solution of 206 grams. It means when the solution was added into the crucible, the mass increased to 206 from 100 grams. At least the mass of solution because the 206 minus uh, minus 100 grams. That's mass of solution. Equals 206 minus 100 all grams, and that gives us 106 grams. So easy. But mass of dry crucible itself is 128. No, mass of crucible plus dry x is mass of crucible plus dry x. Mass of crucible plus dry x. That's what we have here. Is 128. So mass of crucible plus dry X is 128. Mass of crucible is 100 grams. It means mass of dry X will be 128 minus 100. Because we need the sentence of solution because the examiner wants to, wants to calculate it in gram per dm cube, not gram per gram. You know we have been giving the mass of solution in grams. So, but it means we need the volume of solution to able to, to achieve what we want to achieve. Therefore, we need the density to find the volume of solution. Fortunately for us, we know that density is equal to mass of volume. The density of solution is equal to mass of solution over volume of a solution. And that will give that, see, and that means volume of solution is equal to then mass of solution over density of solution. 
And then in this case, the amount of solution is 106 grams over volume of solution. And over density of solution, that is 92. But in this case, I'm going to grab a CLK. It means whatever the depth is in this centimeter cube. So, volume of solution is 106 divided by, by 1.2. Density of solution is 1.20. Density of solution is 1.20. So, now, 106 divided by 1.20 will be for 88.33 cubic centimeters. But again, we could not go ahead like this because the examiner wants us to calculate the solution and uh, the, the solubility in gram per cubic decimeter. It means the volume should not be left at a centimeter cube. So we have to convert it to decimeter cube. Now, we know that 1000 centimeter cube is equivalent to 1 DL cube. Therefore, 88.33 centimeter cube is equal to. 88.33 over 1000 and the answer will be what DMK and this is of 0 0.0833 DMK so that is the volume of a solution in cubic decimeter we are not done so that has now given us the leverage to calculate the concentration in gram per kidney decimeter. So we now come back in solubility in gram per decimeter cube. We have a mass of solutes over volume of solution. And therefore, this will give us what is the mass of solutes we have calculated it here. Mass of dry x, 28, 28 grams divided by volume of solution, that is uh, 0 0.0883 in DMQ. And what does that give us? That gives us 316.99. And that is equivalent, that is approximately 317 grams per cubic decimeter. Whether you need to answer like this or you have to the next number, you're okay. So that gives us the concentration in gram per DM cube. Now, determine solubility in more per DM cube, we use the data sheet. Solubility. And more per DM cube is equal to solubility in gram per DM cube over molar mass. So the basic gap at the end, we have got that one to be theory and that's 17, gap and the molar mass of the X has been given to us as 92 gram per mole. So 3 and 17 divided by 92 will give us 3.45 mole per cubic decimal. And that is our answer. I will implore you to go over your lesson on solubility again to be able to solve more questions. I pray and I grant you better understanding of the lesson. Assalamu alaikum.